This week, we interview none other than our very own Larry Pesce about his DerbyCon talk on the topic of practical password cracking. Stories of the week will cover the usual WordPress and D-Link security failures, a behind-the-scenes look at MS-08067, and Nest's new wireless mesh protocol. A whole lot more is here, so stay tuned. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios here in Rhode Island, the show where exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, systems aren't the only things getting penetrated, functions are the only things getting wrapped, and bits aren't the only thing getting banged. And those cocktails, they're awesome and they are flowing. It's Pulse Security Weekly. Now, fire up a packet capture, pour yourself an adult beverage, and give the intern control of your botnet because <clears throat> here's your host, a man that gave his contractor a soul and then shouted, Don't fax me, bro, Paul Asadorian. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of Security Weekly, and we are brought to you by... Tenable Network Security, creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Jumpstart your security program today and evaluate Security Center CV, the continuous monitoring solution. For more information, visit them on the web at tenable.com. Pony Express. Check out their line of penetration testing devices, including the Pone Pad, the Pone Phone, and the Pone Pro. For enterprises, there's Pone Pulse, providing continuous visibility into wired, Wi Fi, and Bluetooth spectrums across all physical locations, including remote sites and branch offices. For all those hard to reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at ponyexpress.com. Onapsys, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at onapsys.com. Awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Security Weekly. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, joined in studio by the lovely... Larry Peche. I don't know about lovely, but I'm here. <laughs> You're here, fresh <laughs> off the heels of DerbyCon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was some very interesting stories that were being told oh my before gosh. the show. Yeah. It's great. It was a good time. You know, fun, fun had by all. <laughs> On the lines via Skype. Actually, it feels like he's right here in studio with us. It's Mr. Joff Thire. Welcome, Joff. G'day, Paul. How are you? It's good to be here. Look at this. DerbyCon was a lot of fun, I have I, I, to say. I can even pick his nose. Awesome. You can. That's awesome. On the lines via Skype, Mr. Not Kevin is here with us as well. Welcome, Not hey. Kevin, to the show. Hey, Paul. How's it going? It's going fantastic, my friend. I am excited about this episode. It is the first uh, Security Weekly broadcast, oh, other than Hack Naked TV and other than the webcast we did yesterday. Those don't count. Yeah, those things. From the new studio. <laughs> the first <laughs> big me. show from the new studio. I'm very, very excited. We recently uh, expanded. Lot, lots of construction dust, lots of hair. Yes. <laughs> well, it was a barbershop, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's very hairy. It's very... It was, uh, and we're not hairy. talking about the hosts. No. No, well, those two, but right. Actually, Different. someone on the Stoey Geek show in the chat room names his nickname is Paul's chest hair because one episode I was <laughs> chest hair. <laughs> anyway, uh, we love we love we love our <laughs> listeners. We do, we do. Uh, Larry's teaching Sans six seventeen wireless ethical hacking and defense coming up in Las Vegas. That's Sept already happened. Oh, but Pentest Hack Fest coming up in a couple weeks in November. In, okay, uh, in Washington D.C. Yep, in lots more places. Yep, uh, and I will actually be not teaching, but I will be at CDI in D.C. as well. Yes, D.C., usually in uh, December, right? Yep, that's in uh, December, a uh, week after my birthday and the week before Christmas. Nice. Yep. Nice. What, what are you doing there if you're not teaching? Uh, I am uh, TAing for uh, ICS 410. Larry's providing the TNA. I am. For 410, that's awesome. Yes. Okay. I, I kind of want to go to that now. <laughs> It will be. It will be epic. It's going to be, be epic. epic. Um, that's uh, that's all we had for announcements. And we're gonna. In our interview is you, Larry. <laughs> I, <laughs> glad I could make it. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, 
So it's it's less about an interview, but more of a discussion. Of t- t- yeah, yeah, like a segment, a, a yeah. text, little text sure. segment, little sure. discussion, little yeah. It's all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, let's, uh, Joff, no, were you at, at and Kevin? Were you guys at DerbyCon? Yeah, uh, I was at DerbyCon. Uh, we did uh, Black Hills did a gr- a, a great talk. Uh, we did a talk on uh, on hunt teaming. Had a good time. Got to meet a lot of friends as usual, and uh, DerbyCon was terrific. Was nice, such a good time. Excellent. Larry, how was your DerbyCon experience? It's awesome. So, you know, DerbyCon, it's it's family, and people you know people check their bags at the door, mm. and it was a it was a good time. We had some unexpected things happen. You know, mm-hmm. one, our our CFO and uh, one of the founders of the company came out sort of last minute to do some recruiting because um, we're we're trying to hire like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's uh, it was a good time, and of course the CFO is there, so he's the one with the checkbook. Nice. So <clears throat> epic dinners were had. That's good. Yeah, and That's before good. he got there, epic bourbon was had. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong a, with that. Um, you had a, a no, Pappy we, Van I, Winkle I, flight sample going on, yes. dude. Oh, my God. My comment on Twitter was like, dude, you're doing it right. Like it was, that, if you're going to go to DerbyCon <laughs> and you're going to go to Louisville and you're going to drink bourbon, yeah. I mean, a Pappy Van Winkle it was a, flight. It was a flight of 10, 12, and 15-year-old Pappy Van Winkle. That's awesome. And I couldn't believe the price. Yeah. If you get Pappy Van Winkle at like the suggested retail price at a you know the reasonable price, because you see it inflated on eBay and oh other, yeah, like one of the liquor stores here locally has like a bottle of like the twelve year for like three hundred seventy five dollars. I'm like, no, dude, you, you're missing the point. The thing that makes Pappy Van Winkle so great is that it's pretty reasonably priced bourbon, but it drinks just as good as like a high end scotch and a really high end bourbon. Right. So I mean I don't think it's but, the best thing you've ever drink, but for the price it's but, definitely well, the best thing. And but it's it's in such limited availability that's, that's why the, thing, the, the price is limited. limited. Yeah. So I, I get it to, I will get on Where off. did you have that? So that was at a restaurant called the Marketplace. Mm-hmm. It was just down the street from the hotel past Fourth Street Live about a block and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, just past the Palace Theater on mm-hmm. the left hand side we ate an open air market type thing. Uh, and they said on the menu, and they said you have to ask for the price. Mm-hmm. And it was for the ten year. It was eight dollars for a two ounce pour. Mm-hmm. It was twelve dollars. No, it was fourteen dollars for the twelve year, and it was eighteen for the fifteen nice. for a two ounce pour. You could get the flight, which was a one ounce pour, mm-hmm. and it was half price. Gotcha. Which was unbelievably yeah, cheap so you get because to sample it. because yeah. I got a when my birth my fortieth birthday we went to mm-hmm. dinner and I got a one ounce pour of uh, Pappy Ten Year and it was forty dollars. Wow, here, but in the land of bourbon, yes, it was thirty. It bourbon. was thirty dollars for the thing. So you say your fortieth birthday was what five seven years ago or something <laughs> like that? Wow, 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 wow. 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 You, have to count for, you have to come for inflation in those prices. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Apparently. And then of course you get back into and you, we got back to the hotel and um, they at the menu at the sway bar they have twenty year old pappy on the menu. Mm-hmm. <gasps> twenty year old pappy. How much is that a glass? So I asked 60? what a, I asked what a pour of Pappy Van Winkle was and of uh, the twenty, and they said, "Ooh, yeah. See, we don't do single pours of that. You have to buy the bottle, and it's two grand." I'm like, um, what? yeah, hey, that beer, that looks good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, I did not indulge. Yeah, no, way too expensive. Um, so you gave a presentation. What was your presentation about? Because we're going to spend a little so, time talking about your presentation. Yeah, yeah. Cause so I, Nick went to your presentation. Yeah. And I said, we should do a segment on it. <laughs> oh, so it was fun. It was fun. Um, the, the presentation was entitled, uh, My Password Cracking Brings All the Boys to the Yard. <laughs> you know, the Kelly song. And um, exactly that. And I wouldn't exactly say it brings all the boys to the yard, but it was very much a sort of password cracking 101. How the yeah. hell do you get started? And it was it was born out of uh, me being in Guardians and having the only password cracking rig uh, yeah. the, uh, in the organization. And it was, <coughs> hey, we've got passwords. You've got to crack them. All right. So I start asking, hey, guys, how do I crack these passwords? Oh, well, you go into John the Ripper, mm-hmm. and you do this command line option. You go to that command line option, and then you let it go. I'm like, well, all right, that's cool. And then uh, the other, oh, you do OCL we'll Hashcat with your password cracking rig, and then you, you set this option and this option, and you go. And I'm like, well, that's great. That's technical information of how to run a tool. Mm-hmm. But there was, n- there was very little discussion of a methodology. Right. Like, 
you've got passwords and you run a tool. Well, that's great, but there's way more in between that because, right. of course, first what I started doing was you take these NTLM passwords mm -hmm. and you start running them through OCL Hashcat and you start doing brute force. All the characters, starting at one character and up until you know eight characters, and you get to eight characters, and the next thing you know, it says it's going to take greater than ten years mm -hmm. to accomplish. This is GPU-based stuff. This shouldn't mm -hmm. take 10 years. And Now, granted, it's a modest GPU stuff. This shouldn't take 10 years. Is it a CUDA? Uh, it's AMD. Okay. AMD. So you have so the <coughs> AMD <coughs> excuse yep. me, video cards? Yeah, I have three AMD video cards. They're mm -hmm. very inexpensive. I don't think I paid more than $100 a piece for any of the cards, so mm -hmm. they're older. Um, but we just did <coughs> um, some hashes. Uh, I did LM hashes yesterday, which LM are, are mm -hmm. easy, but it took less than three minutes to crack uh, a... Uh, 15 character LM password because nice. it's two eight it by that, two eight yeah. two seven by chunks. I'm sorry, it was a 14 character LM password. Mm -hmm. So um, it took us less than three <laughs> minutes, um, and that was the how do I get from that three minute mark as opposed to you know doing brute forcing years, to take yeah. ten years? How, what's the intermediate steps? And very few people actually talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the few people that I found that did talk about it publicly and openly was uh, Bo Bullock mm -hmm. um, of Hack Naked TV fame and mm -hmm. <coughs> started looking at his methodology and talked to folks like Dan King, mm -hmm. who does a lot of password cracking. Um, Dan's been on the show before and talked to him about his methodology and started to talk about, you know, uh, talked with some of our guys and, you know, what put all of the pieces together. And, and what I found is for, for password cracking 101, it's really about your initial word lists mm -hmm. and taking those word lists and tweaking the crap out of it, mm -hmm. but tweaking the crap out of it reasonably. Um, the goal is not to do a full password recovery. The goal is to recover... Uh, you know, b my thought is 65 to 85% is freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. It's typically more like 10%. Right. Because 10% gets you likely that one or two accounts that yeah, you need for to, pen testing to is, move yeah. on to the all next, of your other goals. The next process. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. The next level. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so you give, give it so you can pivot mercilessly. But it was great for me because, like, you, you know, you said that there's nothing really new in the talk, but it was an opportunity, I think, to take – a lot of the bits and pieces, you yes. know, you got some advice from this person, advice from this person, and then you got to go read an article and say, okay, I got to put this hardware and use this software. Yep. And then I got to get these word lists and then I got to have these strategies. Yep. And you got to put it all together. And I think it was great that you put together a talk on, exactly. on all that. Yep. So. so, yeah, I mean, it start start with a, base word, a basic word list, you know, Rock You or mm -hmm. whatever the new Ashley Madison word list will yeah, end up yeah, being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start there and then... You play with it. You do character substitution in one of many ways. You run multiple rules, and then you you delve into multiple word lists. So no one job is taking 10, 12 hours. You mm -hmm. want them to run one hour, two hour, three hours, and then you move on to the next batch and the next batch and the I next batch. So you're not waiting for this whole long thing to happen when mm -hmm. you may only get 1%. No, you do, oh, hey, I got 1%. Hey, I got 2%. Hey, I got 5%. And mm -hmm. it's taking you three or four hours, potentially. I gotcha. As opposed to 10 years. Um, so you crack a password, and then you, you take that one out and then run it through a different word list, crack a few more, take those out, exactly. run the remaining ones through another word list. Exactly. That's a good strategy. So yeah, multi multiple, multiple word lists and customize per customer. So it's... Their password policy, right? Well, they, we'll get there. We'll okay. get there. Um, you know, word list per customer. Um, so if you think about, you know, here, you, you say you go do a pen test for a company here in Rhode Island, um, you, you take your standard word list, mm -hmm. uh, you use cool to pull all their words off their website. Mm -hmm. Um, you use, um, Wikipedia to start scraping Wikipedia for entries about Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. So you start pulling, putting names like Roger Williams and you put do it. Do you do the family guy word list? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, you use the family guy word list, like Cohog, Cohog yep. and you know the, the Thirsty Clam and mm -hmm. all of those. Perfect. Um, there actually is a bar called the Thirsty Beaver. There's a, there's a Thirsty Clam, too. And there's a Thirsty Clam. There is the Thirsty Clam as well. There's a Drunken Clam. There's a Drunken Clam. There's a Drunken Clam. Yeah, yeah, it's in uh, North Providence, actually. Yeah. Um, and then, you, so you get like uh, city and town names, and you mm -hmm. populate it with the city and town names, um, popular street names. Uh, you take the top uh, 100 names from the U.S. Census mm -hmm. for the state for the last 20, 30, 40 oh, years, however long. That's interesting. That's um, interesting. Because what are the chances that someone here is going to be mm -hmm. have one of those names, mm -hmm. and maybe their kids' names or dogs' names or any of those? Is that first names. name and last name? It's only first name. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> we use that when we were naming our kids as fodder for the in-laws because, mm-hmm. no, 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 that's not a, that's a boy's name. Actually, no, no, it's not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's the census data. <laughs> um, oh, nice. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and then you take uh, local celebrities, sports teams, names of the sports teams, mascots for those sports mm-hmm. teams, because they're all going to be dependent locally. Um, names of those people that are on the sports team, like right. how many people do you think have Tom Brady, Gr- is their password. Brady or yeah. Gronk right. in their password here? Um, you know, uh, Dwight Evans or Roger Clemens. You know, I'm showing my age with some last time I followed baseball. <laughs> nice. But uh, you get the idea. You yeah. start customizing that list based on, on your, your local area. Mm-hmm. Um uh, one of my favorites is you take some of the th- foods that the area is famous for. Mm-hmm. So, like coffee milk would be here in Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. Um, Dell's lemonade, uh, Cohogs, uh, lobster, mm-hmm. you know, famous foods for the area. Um, we were doing some work in the Midwest, and uh, the area we were working, there's a popular food called Geta. And it's like a wheat sausage mix that was mm-hmm. brought in by the Germans and the, and the Dutch. And it, they have a Geta festival. How many people do you think had Geta in their password? Really? That's surprising. Surprisingly. Um, so customizing it per per geographical area, um, knowing sort of what the user base looks like um, based on company word lists, uh, company website, and mm-hmm. some of the things that they talk about. Uh, and then taking that word list and munging it. So doing character replacement, mm-hmm. lead speak. Um, because the lead speak re- character replacement, upper, lowercase, camel casing, doesn't mm-hmm. change the length. Right. So the length, the length of the words. Then take those word lists, that massive word list you've got, and split them by length. Split mm. that word list of bunches of words and split mm-hmm. all of your words that have three characters into one list. So and you run, run that. that list. And then it you do, runs quicker. It runs quicker. So, so we're, do not doing any, we're not doing any camel casing at the Thirsty Clam, are we? Well, we could. We could. That's, le- <laughs> that's illegal here in Rhode Island, though, Joff. Is, is it? Oh, no, no, not, every, not, everything's illegal. Camel illegal. casing no, no. is perfectly legal. You just can't pay for the camel. <laughs> 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 if it's given a free will between two consulting adults. <laughs> but not at the Thirsty Beaver. No, no, that's the Thirsty Clam, wasn't the, the thirst- Beaver? Wow. I think it's the Thirsty wow, Bearded and, Clam. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> clam and camel are kind of camel toe or... Well, synonymous. I think Larry showed me the first. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. I went to the Thirsty Camel Toe the other night. It was great, great place. Oh, yeah, definitely, nice. definitely. That's a good when they're oh. thirsty. All right, let's <laughs> dip, dip below the stratosphere. Wow. Let's bring it back up. Wow, wow. <laughs> what so were you, we talking about again? Oh, oh yeah, password cracking. Yeah. So, and the other thing that's really helpful is you know when you're building those lists, whether you're doing camel case, lead speak, um, and password length. Um, one of the things that's hugely helpful is knowing what the password policy is. Mm-hmm. And well, sometimes it's easy as, "Hey, customer, what's your password policy?" Mm-hmm. But other times you have a shell anyway, and so it doesn't matter. That's the big one. I'm like, you've already got access to the system. Pillage the village. Mm-hmm. And you know, so there's some other things about pillaging the village. So pillage the village for the, the password policy. Um, we talked about a couple of different ways that you can get that under Windows uh, from Active Directory locally um, and or Unix, or typically Linux. Um, and then while you're there, do other stuff. You know, pull files, start using files for contents for word lists. And the big one that was kind of the duh moment to me was not just the contents of files, but the file names themselves. Oh, wow, yeah. So think about this one. For those of you who have been listening to the show forever, you know that Paul and I have kids, and you've probably figured out what their names are by mm-hmm. now. And you know that my oldest daughter is named Corinne. What do you think that I have a picture on my computer that's set to my desktop background and the file name is Corinne.jpg? <clears throat> right. And my password is Corinne42 exclamation. Mm-hmm. It's not. I know Larry's password now. Exactly. Well, that's the one for my luggage. <laughs> right. So <laughs> we'll talk about one slightly better than the luggage password. Yeah. yeah that's pretty good. But so you grab file names and there's a pretty good chance that some of the content of those file names are going to be in passwords as well. So wow. Hey, look, we're advertising for OtterBox now. Nice. Dope. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. There yeah. I, actually, I actually need to get one I'm back. for my new phone. But yes. It's a different story. So, I mean, that was, that was sort of my revelation was about the, the file names as well. And then uh, being able to take some of that and compare what we've got for word lists to mm-hmm. the password policies. And then using those password lists, the word lists, 
the really good tailored word lists with both John the Ripper and uh, OCL Hashcat. So OCL Hashcat with the, the GPU support mm -hmm. is going to go through those word lists way faster because it can calculate the hashes faster than just CPU-based stuff. Right. Uh, oh, and you know, here's the other thing about OCL Hashcat. If your office is cold in the winter, it'll, it'll quickly warm it up. Nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's and that's actually some of the discussion. We're actually going to build a new password, Cracking mm -hmm. Greg, it in Guardians. Um, and uh, the uh, the place that we have to hold it is uh, hosted is going to be my basement because my basement yep. is unheated mm -hmm. and uh, drops to 65 in the summer. Mm-hmm. And so, so we 50, have a five uh, in the winter. So, mm. so, so at Black Hills, we have a secret location in the hills, which we shall not disclose. That has a water cooled uh, password cracker that is uh, already deployed, and um, we're very excited about that. It works very well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, a, a fluid cooled, I should say. I don't know the necessarily water. water. That's probably more antifreeze than anything else. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, we're 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 melting some uh, some uh, GPUs away there, and. Um, I think we might have actually had to put a couple power supplies in it, so it's um, yeah, it's pretty powerful. <laughs> yep, yeah, no, we're we're in process of our building building a new one just to have some some better capabilities so that we can more effectively use some of the word lists and, and mm -hmm. that type of stuff. Um, one of the other ones that uh, talked about was uh, more effect powers of observation, um, more effectively um, observing passwords in the clear to determine what other sort of passwords look like. Um, the classic example is the Verizon MiFi. So every mm -hmm. time you're near a Verizon store, go in and look at mm -hmm. the MiFi devices, and they've got the default passwords printed on the back of them. You start collecting enough of those, you can build a pattern. So you start looking at users' passwords you've already cracked. You can start building a pattern on based on what the users like to do in that environment. Um, and in the case of the Verizon ones, if you start constructing your brute force lists or your brute force and your mask attack better, it will be significantly faster. So, for example, uh, you, you have, uh, let's say, in a uh, Verizon MiFi password, the first, uh, say, it's 17 characters. Holy crap, a 17-character password. But the first uh, 11 characters of those are either static or observable in the air from the MAC address. Right. So they're, sta they're <coughs> effectively static. You can guess mm -hmm. them. There is now uh, six characters of password that you don't know. But the password, the part that you don't know is always numbers. Mm -hmm. And it's always six characters. So don't do your brute force from zero, from one character, all the one character, and then all the two character, and then all the three character. Just do all six character guesses. And uh, so it, one of the things that we've seen with that, you start at the, the one character guess, and it'll run for three or four days, mm -hmm. potentially. Um, Especially because it's WPA two pre shared key, so it takes a it takes a long time. It'll run for three, four days, two, three, mm -hmm. four days, depending. But if you start right at the total of six characters, you have two to the sixth guesses to make, mm -hmm. which is significantly fewer than the the remainder. Right. Um, I'm sorry, two to the sixth guesses versus a um, hundred thousand. Uh, not, not a million guesses. Right, so, right, right. Uh, significantly fewer. And, yeah, it's way, way faster. Mm. And, like, three or four minutes as opposed to three or four days. I, I'm <laughs> sorry I missed your talk, Larry. I should have come. Um, but I was okay. been, spent a lot of time a little bit hang hung over. <laughs> um, I don't know yeah, what happens happened. at, at DerbCon. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh, no, Joff, rather. Uh, Joff, no, no comment about being hung over on Sunday morning. None. Yeah. Well, I None. um. <laughs> no, but None. I didn't. I didn't um find the horsehead guy though. Oh that, yeah, mm. but that, I think that was just one year, Joff. No, what? no, no. Was Good. there a couple of years? Yeah, no. He was, was there. They have pictures of him riding in the elevator by himself. Gotcha. And yeah. he was at the crystal method party, and he was not. Walking. I, I, he was not I, walking. He was. I, I, he was I prancing you, like a horse. I thought you said that, that they had the pictures Con? of me riding the horsehead guy in the elevator, and I was a little bit concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you didn't don't remember Wait, those Wait, those pictures? got published? Crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they didn't get published, but they will now. <laughs> uh, Joff, yeah. bring good bourbon when you come for the hundredth yeah, show. <laughs> fun, fun, fun times. Oh, look, guys, I, I seriously can't wait to come up there uh, for 10 years. It's going to be so much fun. We can't wait to have you here, Joff. Yes. In more yeah. ways than you. Uh, anyway, um, so <laughs> we talk about we talk about hardware for your yep. password cracking rig. Yep. One of my questions is, well, how much does read write speed on your hard drive play into it? 
Very little. Well, okay. so when reading from word lists, potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, only if they're giant, though. Yeah, only if they're massive. But it massive just reads it into memory. It's not going to read all of it into memory because it just can't. Because okay. you're going to you're going to generate gigabytes worth of potentially word list depending on on some of the volume. Um, you but really, if you put you 32 don't... gigs of RAM in your system, it's two. True. I mean, I wouldn't build a system with less than 32 gigs of RAM today. nowadays. Yeah, yeah. nowadays, I, uh, my password cracking rig, I only think has eight gigs of memory. But now the speed of your RAM probably makes a difference. You probably want fast RAM or no? So I I would argue no. It's more about the speed of the calculation of the hash type. It's a CPU, obviously, and GPU GPU is GPU speed is GPU. Yeah, because once you get that vector set up in the GPU, it's all about how fast the GPUs can crunch it. Yep. So yeah, you want yeah, so you, the I fastest mean, GPUs. You want to put your the money into the GPUs, GPUs. Yep, and G- a motherboard that supports it's, whatever the fastest GPUs. bus speed is for your GPU. Exactly, right? okay. exactly. So that that was a that was a great one. Um, uh, Evil Mog did a uh, talk on password cracking immediately following mine, mm-hmm. and his was like an extension of my talk, talking all about the uh, GPU stuff. Mm-hmm. So his uh, talk was something along the lines of confessions of a, a large scale crypto coin miner. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and talked about how he managed, you know, hundreds to thousands of GPUs simultaneously for doing Bitcoin mining. Mm-hmm. And it was also same stuff that applied to password cracking as mm-hmm. well. And um, exactly, it was all that, get the, the right motherboards, don't use risers because it inter- puts mm-hmm. electrical interference with the risers, good power supplies, and get the fastest GPUs you can afford and as many of them you. as you can afford. Now, if you, um, for folks out there who want to experiment, although this might get expensive to experiment, uh, you can get cloud instances out there that are GPU backed if you want to uh, just yes. play around in the cloud. And I've done that a little bit, and it does work, but it, it can get expensive. Yes. So, well, yeah, because so, uh, <coughs> Amazon's charging by CPU cycle. Is that true? It was, yes. Calculation. Yes. Some calculation yeah, per, per hour. Use. Yeah, they yeah. use some calculation yeah. per hour. Yeah. Well, and, well, it, and it varies. Well, I was I was going to say that the uh, that the GPU backed um, instances are a little more expensive as well. Yes, mm-hmm. yep. And so it also matters when you sign up for the instance, when you do the quote contract for the instance, uh, depending on what the the rates are based mm-hmm. on demand. It's a supply and demand economy. Uh, um, okay. It depends on which data center you serve mm-hmm. that instance out of. Will depend on price because demand per data center. Mm-hmm. Um, and it will also significantly change depending on whether you do a spot instance or a dedicated instance. Mm-hmm. So a spot instance is sort of pulling cycles from wherever they're available right. as opposed to a dedicated instance where you get dedicated cycles mm-hmm. and dedicated oh, and, hardware. And, and word to the wise, um, don't underbid your spot instance or, or, or bid it too close because you will get shut down pretty quickly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've been there, done that. <laughs> Wait, so now when we talk about which GPU you should get, what's the bus that the cards are plugging into? Uh, PCI. Today? PCI Express. PCI Express, either a version. One, 1X through 16X. Okay, okay. Yeah. And, but yeah. now how many slots do you get in your standard Depend, motherboard? Depends. And that's where the well, risers de- come well, in. And that's depending right? standard, well, what do you define standard? Uh, my motherboard at home has... Um, one 16x riser and mm-hmm. three 1x risers. Gotcha. Um, you can use 1x risers for mm-hmm. the cards mm-hmm. um, because you're not doing lots of data through that bus. You're just you leveraging just, you, the process. I gotcha. Yeah. It's so not, the bu- even the bus on the card isn't as important as the, the right. power of the CPU on the card. Right. I gotcha. Right. You're not pushing lots of data back and forth. Mm-hmm. It's more pulling short amounts of data and doing lots of computations on that short amount of data. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, and so yeah, so it, it <coughs> just you know you don't need uh, a whole lot of fast RAM. You don't need a whole lot of fast. I would disk. I would argue you that this is a, no. Yep. You could probably get out of the one X speed uh, PCI yep. Express cards. Yep. So you could probably build this for not a whole ton of money. Yeah, the, the motherboard, the and the accessories are the cheap part. Yeah. But you want good power supplies because you gotta. Pull you're gonna be drawing a, ton a lot of power. Of power. The okay. power supplies will get expensive. Yep. And the GPUs, depending on what you buy, are going to be expensive. Um, yeah. Even no, wait, even, can, can even you, one uh, uh, even one high end uh, graphics card. Let's say you've got like a high end AMD or, yeah. or a high end uh, Nvidia card. Even that alone is it, when it's maxed out. It's, it's going to draw four or five hundred watts. So yep. you know, you you start getting into uh, multiple graphics cards. You actually are going to get close to even popping uh, circuit breakers on a standard fifteen amp breaker. So you you got to be real careful. You could even yep. 
you build it big enough, you got to split it amongst uh, multiple the branch circuits. Is, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. so how do you, you, you have to controls. chain multiple power supplies together? You can use multiple on the same machine. You yeah, can. sure. To power yeah. the but motherboard only can motherboard take. motherboard only needs one. You're just yeah. having the other one sit around firing for uh, 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 CPU uh, GPUs. So the GPUs yeah the motherboard the, the motherboard doesn't need much power though. So. Yeah, but the GPUs connect directly to the power supply. Correct. They have their own power Correct. source. They draw from the power supply. Yep. They don't draw yep. power from the PCI slot. Well, they can, uh, but it's so it's minimal. It's, it's minimal. Mi I yeah. got you. Well, yep. you can, okay. None, none of the cards today, even though they can draw power from the from the motherboard, none of the cards today. Yeah, um, they're, they're all point directly do. They have their own. Nice. They have their little Molex connector that you yep. connect them. I got you. It goes to show how much I'm not a PC gamer I am anymore. <laughs> uh, same here. Yeah, and I, I haven't bought a, a really expensive big graphics card exactly. in so long. And yeah. you know, when I first started this, um, do you remember when Darren and I were doing Hack Naked at Night yeah, a lot? Yeah. And we started talking about all the stuff we were building. One of the things that we were building as part of that video series was a MAME cabinet. Mm -hmm. And when I first started, the MAME cabinet sits in my basement most of the time unused. Mm -hmm. And I go down there and look and I'm like, hey, there's a 16X PCI Express slot on this mm -hmm. thing. And why don't I just go get a card and put it in here? And then when it's not playing video games, it's cracking, it's right. doing Bitcoin mining or something mm -hmm. like. And that's that's where I got started. And I'm like, oh, uh, cards are on sale. They refurbs and they're totally awesome. So nice. let's buy more cards. And then I got someone to give me a motherboard for like $40. I mean, mm -hmm. the motherboard was $40. Nice. So it wasn't terribly expensive. So you can that's definitely great. do it on a budget. You're not going to have this super thing, but it's going to mm -hmm. be way better than CPU. Right, right, right. Way better than CPU. Now, Joff, you were talking about some of the high-end potential cards. I mean, aside from the need for really good power supply, you're talking a couple hundred dollars for a power supply. Mm -hmm. um, th those cards, the really nice ones, they're somewhere between five and six hundred dollars a piece. Yeah, now they're the, not. No, they're not. So you go drop four cards in a rig, and you're talking two grand, and you haven't mm -hmm. even gotten to a power supply to power them. Mm -hmm. And you're talking another five, six hundred dollars potentially for power supplies. Yeah, because you have to put. A <laughs> I mean, if you have multiple four, power right, you, yeah. two, you Well, have you, multiple you're probably going to have to, at, at minimum, if, if you've got four cards, you're probably going to have to put at least two power supplies in it. Yep, yep, I got you. Um, exactly. Uh, yeah, and you will, you'll quickly, uh, you'll quickly find out if you're on the same branch circuit on both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the one thing that's really nice about my setup is that um, it actually sits on top of my rack because it's so ghetto. It's using an old case. And um, it's got these two pieces of wood screwed into the side that has a piece of threaded rod in which uh, they're on risers because the ports are too close together. Mm -hmm. So they have to be spread apart. Um, one for airflow and two, they just physically won't fit you, next you to each other. You need what Chris just sent me. It's a little... Uh, a powered extender. Uh, mole uh, what do they call it? Molex uh, connectors. Molex connectors. Yeah. And uh, what Chris says, it allows you to remove the video card from the case itself for better cooling. Exactly. And be, those are some of the things where you can, you, know, you can run into some issues with mm -hmm. the fact that they're extended and interference. These are $9. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They're cheap. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the, and so mine are on some extenders, but they're only just up above the case. Mm -hmm. And they're zip-tied to this piece of threaded rod. Nice. Like it's totally ghetto, um, <laughs> That's awesome. but it works. We need, it works. We need photos, Larry, or it's not real. Uh, I have some photos out there, and that's that's absolutely something I can do. The one thing is, it's nice. It's less than four feet from my electrical panel, mm. <laughs> so you need another outlet. You need another branch circuit. It's four feet of Romex and a breaker. And <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying that's easy. <laughs> nice. Yep, yeah. it's so very in, easy. In your guys' opinion, if an organization wanted to do. You know, not heavy password cracking constantly, but wants to say audit their network every once in a while. Would be better to put the high upfront costs into a GPU rig or go cloud. Uh, so I would recommend going cloud for someone that's not doing it often, unless there's some ulterior motive. If you can get them to, depending on the size of the organization, um, if you can do um, altcoin or crypto coin currency mining in the off season, so to speak. Um, that may be some ways to recoup some of the cost of that box. That was, quite honestly, that's how I paid for mine. Um, I, I spent like $600 for the box, and it was right about the Winter Olympics time. Um, and I was mining a ton of Dogecoin. I had a couple hundred thousand Dogecoin just sitting there spooling away. It didn't cost much energy to, to pull that off. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Winter Olympics, the Jamaican bobsled team qualified for the Winter Olympics, but mm -hmm. they had no funds to get there. Mm -hmm. So they started, some groups started taking donations. And uh, those, the donations that were taken to get the Jamaican bobsled team were in Dogecoin. So people were buying Dogecoin. Mm -hmm. Demand went up for Dogecoin. 
And the only way you could buy Dogecoin was to take money, real money, and buy Bitcoin and then trade Bitcoin for Dogecoin and then donate Dogecoin. <laughs> so people were buying Dogecoin. <clears throat> the price skyrocketed. I sold for Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and then Bitcoin jumped up a little bit. And you sold so Bitcoin. So I sold Bitcoin. And I got about $800 out of the deal, which was more than enough to pay for the Reagan door than <laughs> enough to hilarious. pay for all the energy that I used. So th those kind of habits will uh, will lead you towards day trading. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a slippery slope. It's a very slippery slope. That's awesome. It's, it's, it's addictive. But, hey, uh, one other thing I, I was going to point out, is just as a caution for the listeners, um, I'm sure the cloud services are very careful with privacy. <laughs> But, um, Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. I, I just want to point out that if you're going to ship your hashes out to a cloud service, just be cognizant of the fact that you are indeed shipping your hashes out to a host <clears throat> service, uh, and that data might get pwned at some point. And, so, and I, that would and be I the will potential say, downside. Yes, and read your terms of service. Very mm, careful. Not about what you're using it for, but who's liable. Yeah, yeah, mm. precisely. Um, and that, you know, honestly, a decent cracking rig is, e even at the low end, like two GPU-based graphics cards, is not a whole lot of money and mm. gives you a fair amount of bang for your buck. Yep. So, uh, do, yeah, do it do it cloud the first couple of times, maybe twice twice a year, mm -hmm. and see and how it goes. More, yeah, yeah. If you're going to do it more often than that, then maybe it's it's worth spending, spending a couple of bucks. And quite honestly, and, and that's the other thing, too. You can put it in your nice, cool data center if you've got one. Mm. Um, that will help. And if this is an audit thing, you can let that thing run 24-7, cracking mm -hmm. your passwords, so you don't need something super crazy. Exactly uh, right. Six, yeah, like exactly. the $600 rig that, that, I, that I bought, you can spend $600 and probably double your performance for what I've got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of things I've actually recommended to our customers uh, over time. And one is crack your own passwords. And the second one is... Um, uh, do your own reconnaissance on your organization. It actually, yes. it's amazing. It's amazing what people can um, can learn and and can tighten up and improve just by doing a little bit of self inflicted recon and cracking. It's yep. it's really pretty cool. Yeah, we yeah, did. Case in point, we did uh, we did some work for a customer not all that long ago, and they had WPA uh, two pre shared key, and their password was on the website. Yep. Not yep. Yep. not this is our Wi Fi password, but cool. Pull the word list, run it, and you know, ten minutes later, we had the pre-shared key for their wireless network. It, it, it's sort of one of those hygiene things. It's like you know, why not why not adopt it as a hygiene practice? Once you get in the habit of it, mm -hmm. make it a process every quarter, or or you know, or biannually, or whatever the cycle that works for you. And it's an amazing how many, how much reward you can get out of that. Yep. Cool. Closing thoughts, Larry. It's easy. It's easy. You spend a just little time. It, yeah. Spend right? a little time up front. Just spend time up front. And quite honestly, for an operation that we're doing this, like, oh, my God, this is so fast. No, you can make it faster by spending some time up front, by getting a word list. Um, and, and quite honestly, one of my next steps is to take this process of that word list and automating mm -hmm. all the stuff. <coughs> I mean, so right. if anybody wants to help out with that, um, expect some GitHub projects. We already have two pieces of code out in our Guardian's GitHub uh, for doing some of the password mm -hmm. munging. Nice. So, cool. Oh, me, 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 me. Larry, let me know. I'll help you out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. All right. We're going to take a short break and come back and talk about the stories for this week. So stay Thanks. tuned. Don't go anywhere. Drinks. Drinks. 